Here we are at Lime Street, Liverpool's main line intercity railway station. Home to many a tearful scene as two young lovers gaze into each other's eyes and down at their railway tickets, quietly sobbing. How much? The amount of money I have given to the railway system over the last 25 years is probably enough to fund a small third world country, which is all the railway system is fit for, isn't it? Railway travel in this country is akin to a subtle form of torture. If the Japanese had won the war, they wouldn't make us build the railway, they'd make us travel on it. Mind you, at least the Japanese have got the bullet train. In Britain, we're only up to the bow and arrow stage. I think they should replace the word fast with a more realistic adjective. How about the 10.15 train service from Bristol Parkway eventually to Paddington? Much more realistic. And they're so overcrowded, the trains. The other day, I was on the train and went for a piss, and a voice from inside the toilet bowl went, do you mind? Even buying a ticket is a nightmare. The other day, I nearly had a breakdown. I said to the guy, look, I'm fed up with this. I just want to get from A to B. He looked at me and went, don't go via B anymore, mate. You have to go via J, change a Q, then light at W for a special vowel service. And I think travelling on the trains on a Sunday gives me to understand that the railways are run by a sinister cabal of right-wing, born-again fundamentalist Christians because it's like you're an absolute sinner and you're being punished for having the temerity to dare to travel on a Sunday. What they should just have a big sign saying, Repent ye sinners! or wait till Monday morning. For four centuries, Liverpool's main form of income was fishing, trading, and the harvesting of a strange commodity called grief. According to the distinguished Elizabethan scholar and blonde bombshell, Sir Boris of Johnson, Liverpool people were absolutely addicted to it. In 1535, Sir Boris wrote in Ye Spectatory, the old magazine, Yea, the people of Liverpool are full well wallowing in this excess of emotion and blubbereth well and lustily by day and night till the river Mersey, aye, hath grown full 400 fathoms by the shedding of 600 gallons of tears. Whereas ye rest of England beeth quiet and demure, except when they get knocked out of Euro Championship or on a Friday night outside ye oldy inny of Weatherspoon. <coughs> In the 17th century, Liverpool won the award to be European city of colonial expansion. So began its illustrious history as gateway to the empire and exporter of people. Welcome to the Cavern Quarter. This is the area where the tourists come to see the Beatles. The Beatles began in 1956 when Paul McCartney won John Lennon in a tombola at Wilson Fate. Lennon and McCartney then went on to become one of the greatest songwriting partnerships the world has ever known apart from Stock Aitken and Waterman, and Sonia. This isn't actually where the cavern was. Where the cavern was, was now on the opposite side of the road. And for a long time, it was a car park, which is an act of municipal vandalism takes from beating, doesn't it? It's like if you turned up the Parthenon in Greece, and the guy just went, sorry, wait, it's now in Esther. In the 1960s, the Beatles were one of hundreds and hundreds of groups in the Merseyside area. Uh, specialising in something called Mersey Beat, which must be one of the few rock and roll movements in the world named after the river. I can't really see Glasgow Clyde Bop, or I can't really see Mississippi Roll catching on. The Beatles, or if you're American, the Beatles, which is quite confusing, isn't it? The Beatles sounds like a, a gang of crazy people just given to practical jokes. They actually went to a northern industrial German town called Hamburg. And that's where apparently they found their feet, which is quite handy because they were sick and tired of working around on their hands. Hamburg was a rough industrial port full of prostitutes, gangsters and ne'er-do-wells. Good word that, isn't it, ne'er-do-well? I wonder what the opposite is. There goes Frank. He's a right often do good. In the early 90s, it was rumoured that Hugh Grant was going to play the part of Paul McCartney in a remake of The Beatles' Early Life. Fantastic, about to read all the Beatles songs, but really posh for them. Imagine that. Love me, do. She loves you, ya, ya, ya. Hey, Judith. Get bark. There are people who do carp and say that the Beatles was all 40 years ago, and that nothing whatsoever of any musical worth has happened on Merseyside since 1970. And I think they have got a point, isn't it? I mean, nothing has happened, except for uh, Badfinger, 
Kestel Maneuvers in the Dark, Elvis Costello, Cass, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, the Teardrop Explodes, Pete Wiley, War Heat, Echo and the Bunny Man, Dead or Alive, The Lars, It's Immaterial, The Lotus Eaters, The Lightning Seeds, The Christians, Space, Shack, The KLF, Half Man, Half Biscuit, Atomic Kitten, Cream, The Coral, The Zootons, The Bandits, This is the beer head, scene of many a tearful journey of a family starting out in hope, going across the sea to a new life in America or New Brighton. We gave the American colonies ships, guns and manpower and they gave us back tobacco, molasses and obscure R&B records by Little Willy Blind Spots and Lemon Squeezers. Behind me is the famous Royal Liver Building built between 1908 and 1911. Construction proceeded very quickly. Each of the ten stories was built at the rate of one every 19 days, which is very quick, almost as fast as Liverpool City Council demolished the rest of Liverpool in the 60s. And behind me, perched on top of the Royal Liver Building, are the world famous Liver Birds. Now it is said, according to legend, that if anyone should ever see the Liver Birds leave the building and fly away, they must be on some really strong acid. The liver birds were originally eagles, uh, which was the symbol of Saint John, which King John took and put on his coins. And they do say that the discrepancy between these ones, which are cormorants, was due to the fact that the draftsman who transferred them must have been really short-sighted. I reckon it's just typical scout's attitude, isn't it? You sat there carving away going, hey, eagles are boring. I've had enough. I'll have a flag and a veil. What about the cormorants? I don't care, the king doesn't like it, I do. Each of the two cormorants holds in its beak a slither of seaweed, which is important because lever or lava was the ancient word for seaweed, which got corrupted into liver, which became the first part of Liverpool. I think it's a good job that the cormorants weren't into crustaceans, really, wasn't it? Otherwise, it could have been uh, called Pool. The pierhead looks out across the River Mersey. Now, the River Mersey was, for years, one of the most polluted rivers in Europe. But in the last 10 years, there's been a massive clean-up, and some people have even said that you can see dolphins swimming around there. Which I think is fantastic. What a cracking idea, eh? Scouse dolphins. Let's let you say, Flipper, what am I looking at? <laughs>